In this lesson, what we're going to be investigating is patterns in a table of values. And we're going to, in this lesson, there's, it's kind of twofold. We're going to learn two things. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at the patterns in tables to see uh, if they represent linear relationships. So that's the first thing we're going to investigate, and we're going to have methods to doing that. And the second thing we're going to uh, look at when we look at patterns and tables is to see how they're related and see if we can make an expression for the relationship in the tables. So how are they related and then coming up with an expression for it uh, is what we're going to do. So let's get into that. You might want to pause this uh, to see if you understand it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is a table of values and determine if each table represents a linear relation. So let's investigate uh, then there's going to be two methods. Let's investigate the first method first. So this question says, does each table represent a linear relation? And we're going to investigate these two tables, okay? So you might want to write those down. And you're going to also want either graph paper, or if you don't have graph paper, uh, you're going to want to draw your lines very straight and have them uh, spaced, have the numbers spaced out very evenly. Otherwise, the effect won't be there. So uh, here we go. So the first thing we're going to investigate is table one. We're going to see if this is a linear relationship, and we're going to do it by graphing the ordered pairs. So table one, uh, first thing we know is that the axes are x and y. We learned that in the previous lesson. Uh, the first uh, column represents the horizontal axis, so that's x, and this is y. And the x's go from negative 1 to 3, so let's just label. So if this is 0, here's negative 1, here's 1, 2, and 3. And the vertical axis has to go from negative 1 all the way up to 7. So if I maybe have a negative 2 here, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You always want to space these out evenly, which is uh, something to be careful about. So uh, even though there's numbers between them, I've still spaced it up and gone up by once. So this first point here, and I'm going to do the next example a lot more quickly. Um, but we'll do this first one a little bit more slowly. I'm just going to highlight each point, and we'll use color relationships. So if I was to graph each of those points, that first point that's highlighted, that coordinate that's highlighted in green, uh, lines up with negative 1 on the x-axis and 7 on the y-axis. So uh, that's the point there that lines up with negative 1 on the x-axis and 7 on the y-axis. So uh, that's that point. Uh, let's go ahead and graph the next point, which is 0, 5. So 0, 5 is this point here. Uh, 1, 3, that blue point. And again, you might want to try this on your own for more effect. You're going to learn a lot more. Uh, here's the point 2, 1. And finally, here is the point 3 and negative 1. <clears throat> so what I'm noticing is by graphing those ordered pairs, it's very clear, and you want to use a ruler, and this way you want to space these out uh, well. It's very clear that these actually do fall in a perfectly straight line. So that one's absolutely yes. If you graph the next table, which I'm going to do all in similar colors, uh, this table here, the first thing we know is that we have n and p. So if I label it with an n and a p, and n has to go from negative 2 all the way up to 7, and p has to go from 0 all the way up to Five, just to fit the table of values in there. And here, would the, here the points would be. So they are right here. Negative 2, 0. The point 1, 2. The point 4, 4. And the point 7, 5. Now what you'll notice here, if you actually pull a ruler and you've done this accurately, is that it originally is a straight line, but then what happens with this last point is it's actually curved down. So it actually curves there. So the answer there is going to be no. So that's one way we can determine if something's a straight line. We can graph the ordered pairs and physically see if it's a straight line. A second way that we can do it is by using patterns. Okay? And by patterns, you'll actually pretty quickly see if they are or aren't. So the pattern that is on the x variable to go from one number to the next is always going up by 1. So negative 1 to 0 is up by 1. 0 to 1 is up by 1 plus 1, plus 1. And in the y column, it also has a pattern. Each number goes down by 2. So this would be a yes. Whether you're using patterns or whether you're graphing, uh, you'll notice that it is absolutely a linear relationship. 
Whereas if you look at the second table, let's look at the pattern, you'll notice that there is a pattern in the numbers for the N column. It's always going up by 3. But for the P column, and this is why it was a curved line at the end, it goes up by 2, up by 2, but then up by 1. So that's going to be whether you use patterns or a graph, you're going to get no for that. So the first thing we looked at today was how do we use tables of values to determine if, if something is a linear relationship. The next thing we're going to do is determining an expression. So we're not going to graph these. We're just going to determine an expression for how they're related. So to express the second variable, maybe I'll highlight this for you. So totally separate part of the lesson, the second variable. So the right or bottom column. In terms of the first variable, the first thing that has to be true is that the relationship must be linear. In each case here, you could investigate it if you want to. You'll notice that they are linear relationships. So that's kind of a rule. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do, and this, this part here takes a lot of practice because it's new to us. So we're going to want to write the relationship in words first. And the next thing we're going to want to do is once we have it in words, which is the difficult part, we can write the expression mathematically. Okay, so uh, that's, that doesn't mean much unless we practice this. So let's go ahead and see what this question is asking for. <clears throat> so let's look at this first table here. The question says determine an expression for n in terms of n. So what we want to do is understand how n is related to m. So if we're going to write this in English first, which I'll do in red, the question is what are we always doing to go from the m number to the n, nu n number right below it? So what I'm noticing is what we're always doing is multiplying by 3. To go from uh, the number in the m row to the number right below in the n row. 0 times 3 is 3, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 6 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9. So the relationship here in English is n is always, that's the place to start, n is always what? It's always 3 times bigger than m. Finally, which I'll do in green, we actually have to write this mathematically. And the way to write this mathematically is n is always, which means equals, and the way to write 3 times bigger than m is just like this, 3m. In mathematics, we don't write the timesing sign. If we have a number directly beside a variable, this means multiplication. So n is equal to 3 times m. That's the relationship there. So here's the last one for the day. In the lesson, this is uh, an interesting one. You might want to investigate it for a while because it's a little bit more tricky. The, uh, the reason it's a little bit more tricky is because there's actually two operations going on here. <clears throat> so I'll let you investigate it for a little while. But the question again is the same one. N is always what? Okay. So is, are we always multiplying by 3? Well, if you look here, that only works for this one. So that's not true. Are we always multiplying by 5? That only works for that one. Are we always adding a certain number? No. So if you look at uh, from 3 to 9, you add 6. But from 2 to 7, you add 5. So that doesn't quite work. So the idea here is that this is a little bit more complicated. How are we going from the numbers in the M row to the numbers right below them? in the n row. Uh, as I investigate this a little bit more, and it'll just take practice for you to look at it and just trying some things, uh, what I'm noticing is what you're always doing is multiplying by 2 and adding 3. Right? If I take any number and multiply it by 2, so for example, if I take 3 and multiply it by 2, I get 6. If I add 3, I get 9. If I take 2 and I multiply by 2, I get 4, plus 3 is 7. If I take 1, times 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5. So any of these numbers in the top row, if I multiply by 2 and I add 3, I always get the number that's below it. So a little bit tricky. 
So n is always 2 times m plus 3. And the way that we write that mathematically is n is always 2 times m, because that's multiplication, and then plus 3. So that's the relationship or the expression for how n is related to m.